TLO was popping. We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, man, this is the channel where you can catch any of the highlights from the live. If we go live and you miss it, don't forget we do got merch. And we also got Patreon five days a week, man. Monday through Friday. If we miss a day, we go Saturday. Uh, all of this can be found in the description below of this video. You know what I'm saying? Just click more, right? See where more right here? You can do that on mine, too. And it's going to say uh, link tree, click it, and then everything will pop up. This is... How do you say your name, bro? Coleon Noir, 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 former British cop exposes the truth about guns in the UK. CMP number sixteen. I didn't have this in my. As y'all can see, I'm trying to get through my um watch later list. It's almost done. I had to clear some stuff, but you know, let's get into this, man. Who don't know what your background is? Can you kind of just kind of? Oh my God, you are on the <laughs> People, uh, away. My first horse. Did we get straight into it? And he then is on fire. We got straight into it. My bad, my bad, my bad. Actually, when I was a teenager, I was part of what. Let's go. Let's, let's jump right into it. Um, It's been a long time. Um, How long? Follow me for seeing live show. And uh, you came on in, as a guest, and we did a. I think mm -hmm. about maybe what, like a. 15, 15 minute segment, 10, 10 minute segment of sorts. It might be a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we did a little, little, little short thing. I still get some people come up to me every now and go, oh my God, you were on the <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I wanted to have you. <laughs> Hit that like button, man. Subscribe. You know how I do. I've never seen this dude. I've seen him on like, like shorts, like shorts, I think shooting but i never knew he had like this large of a platform back on largely um because of your background for and mm -hmm. for people who don't know what your background is can you kind of just kind of do a quick deep sea dive into that as um okay of, okay as quick as i'll, I'll try to paraphrase much kind of obviously my accent kind of gives a lot of it away <laughs> um i'm from england the united kingdom and my first uh, introduction to firearms was actually when I was a teenager. I was part of what's called the Combined Cadet Force, which is a... Ah, we just watched the Cadet Force video. Ministry of Defense run kind of Boy Scouts thing. But it, it kind of challenged, it, it channel, it channels young people into either the Air Force, the, the Army or the Navy. And basically you run around and it's a recruiting drive for um, the military. But one of those things is you get to use old firearms that they have there so it's very focused very very safe and i fired things like lee enfield 303s and, and crazy old guns like that and then after i after i left um college so i was about 18 years old um i never touched a gun again because it's the united kingdom mm -hmm. and unless you have a specific reason for having a firearm which lots of people do so there's a lot of myths about firearms access in okay yeah we're gonna get some clarification because i've been wondering for years y'all been waffling in the comments telling me this and that now we're gonna get the truth united kingdom um okay. but unless you have a reason to have one you know people don't have them you're not gonna tell us the reasons so i never touched one again until i was oh about 26 because by then i was in the police force okay. i joined the police at 23 wow. and i joined the british police and you one of the directions you can go is to become an, an AFO, an armed, armed firearms officer, authorized firearms officer. And then within those ranks, there are different levels. And to cut a long story short. That's crazy. Growing up in Chicago, I touched my first gun at 15. And ever since then, you know what I'm saying? So I worked my way up to becoming a counterterrorism uh, SFO within the London Metropolitan Police. So we were trained in a variety of tactics with a variety of um, weapons platforms and trained to a very high standard. And I was 
my total career within that was a little over 11 years and I became an instructor for them as well. So operational deployments for diplomatic protection, royalty protection. We worked things like the Olympics. Um, I was there for POTUS when he came over, um, the royal wedding between um, William and Kate. So all those kind of events alongside regular crime within the capital. Um, so you, you've been outside with the blip. Okay. A major instance of happening, kidnappings, all that sort of stuff that goes on, along with counterterrorism operations, which happen more frequently than people probably realise. Really? Uh, so, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so, so, that's, <laughs> so, so that's my background within the world of firearms and how to use them operationally. Gotcha. So when we talk about, I want to kind of go back to the, uh, what you said about the kind of myths about there not being any guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what type of guns, generally speaking, do most people who do have them have? Any Shotguns, farmers. Okay. So within the UK, anybody can have a shotgun, anybody okay. at all. You just have to apply. Now, the way it works is you, you, you have to submit an application mm -hmm. that gets um, checked out. And it takes months. It's not like here where you just walk in and then, you, you, know, you do a quick background check. <laughs> um, it, it, it takes months. And uh, you have to have a gun safe and you have to have an ammunition safe. And they have to be separate. Um, technically, theoretically, the police could come around at any time and check that you have these in place. Mm -hmm. um, the realities are that they generally don't because they don't have time um but the the police have to have a reason to deny you a, a, a shotgun license okay so that would be like you're a criminal okay. and uh, typically the people that have them will have them uh, for clay shooting or if they they live near a farm for kind of um, um pest control you know that sort of thing but most people are getting them uh, for clays it's crazy because when I visit the UK, I'm trying to figure out how I can, you know what I'm saying? Just do that sort of thing. But it's still fairly fringe. Not many people do it. Mm. Um, you're kind of a bit odd if you have a shotgun, unless you're a farmer. Now, are, when we say shotguns, are we talking pumps and break action? Or are you allowed to have a semi auto like say, for instance, a Benelli in the <laughs> <laughs> No, no. You can have any kind of a side by side or over and under. Okay. You could have a pump, but it's got to have the baffle in it that makes it only shoot three shots. It took the phone out the shotgun? Maximum. Okay. So that's one in the breach and two in the magazine. Um, Semi-autos, a bit of a no-no. Um, <laughs> although the police, you know, we had them. Um, okay. But, yeah, the general public can't. Me. No, no. Now, when it comes to rifle, sorry. Uh, because, so, no, oh. no, um, I, like, I just want to talk about the real quick, the police thing, right? Because, you mm -hmm. know, there's this, there's this conception that the police in the UK don't have, don't, they don't carry firearms. And I'm assuming, mm -hmm. assuming there's a certain branch of them that do. And so yeah, yeah, armed, armed police carry branch that don't mm -hmm. so from an american contextual standpoint how does that work in relation to say for instance like your kind of traditional beat cop versus like swat so forth and so on okay so your traditional beat cop does not carry a gun mm. full stop um i would say i don't have the exact numbers but just kind of that's how it should be low-key think about it man beat cop you know what i'm saying I'm probably new to the force maybe not but you know beat cop you're not in it. You're not. You're not in it to be anything more higher up. So you might be nervous. You might just have this job just to have this job. You know what I'm saying? You don't need no gun. Get you some pepper spray, and get you a little taser. You good? Uh, thinking off the top of my head, I would say 98% of cops are not armed within the UK. Yeah. And we use we used other tactics. Um, uh, they do, some of them will have tasers, some of them will have incapacitant sprays, but usually it's it's just no firearms. Then there are different tiers of armed officers. Uh, the most basic one... Man, hold on. All right, keep going. Ones, or as I said, the AFOs, um, authorized firearms officers. Then you get Sorry, ones who will split off into, in, into all the different agencies. So you've got immediate response vehicles. So they respond to spontaneous acts out. of violence. It doesn't have to be a firearm. So it could be someone otherwise so dangerous. So someone running around the street with an axe. Gotcha. They're going to send firearms officers. Um, someone running around with explosives, they're going to send firearms officers. The trouble is there's a delay because they tend to <laughs> go to the scene where things have already happened. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, they happen to be fairly nearby. 
Um, one of the most interesting things was the lessons learned in America from active shooters were very much taken on by the UK. So the the concept that if you happen to be an AFO and you happen to be currently armed and you're the closest, well, you're going in. So if you were near a shopping mall or a school or any public place and there was an active shooter event, it didn't matter what level of AFO you were, you were expected to, to go forward and to handle the threat. Um, because the, the, the that makes sense. You have a gun. There's a responsibility to protect the guys that do all the training. The SFOs, which was what I ended up as, it would take us even longer to get there because we were like the SWAT guys who would come in. Now, if it was a pre-planned event, so we thought it might be. So, for example, at a wedding or something like that, yeah. then then we were. Well, we were basically a QRF, we were um, a quick reaction force who were just around the corner, and we would be there to rush in uh, on, on a number of deployment strategies because being the capital it's hard to move around so we would use things like motorcycles mm. or, or or cars or you know or whatever we had other ways to get around <laughs> because we got the Thames we had boats we had all sorts of things <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun but. yeah no it's it's man when, when I think about the UK and, and this is constant comparison from a from a gun control standpoint, well, one thing sure. Is for sure, it's a different culture. Just it's completely different. It's completely yeah, different. it's 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 not apples for apples. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's night and day. I even see it in the comments all the time. Like the comments of this video is going to be night and day. Um, and I and I think to have to have to try to have that conversation or to make that kind of comparison honestly is a little disingenuous when you don't if you don't factor Absolutely. in the fact it's a different culture. Um, that I, try, means, I try to explain that to people all the time here. Yeah. I'm like, you know, yeah, <laughs> no, it's not the same. So. I mean, from your experience, so what is what is your take from being in UK and then coming over now here to America and, and doing and living here and, mm -hmm. and being amongst our culture, um, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to firearms and so forth and so on? What, what's your perspective, especially through the eyes of, of an officer? Okay, so it, it's it's a very complicated issue, but it's actually quite simple to kind of conceptualize. So in the UK, for many, many, many years, there was a very strict gun control system set up where you know, like I explained with a shotgun. Anybody could have a shotgun, but you had to go through a lengthy licensing procedure. Mm -hmm. Anybody can have a rifle as well. When I say a rifle, I mean, you know, 308, 762, 556, repeating rifles. Um, you just have to have a reason to use Really? I didn't know that. Use that. They'll come to where you're going to shoot it. Now, we're, not look talking, at the topography. we're not talking like AR pattern type. Right? No, okay. no. Now, you used to be able to have those up okay. until one instant of active shooter in the 1970s. or yeah, We covered that. No, in the 80s. Changed all the gun laws. And then they, yeah, they banned those. Um, but you can still have powerful firearms, powerful rifles. You just have to have a reason f uh, for using them and a place that is um, audited by the police as, as appropriate for that use. Nobody can own a pistol, unless curiously you permanently weld a suppressor onto it because in the UK, I know, in the UK a rifle is defined by the barrel length. So if you permanently TIG weld a suppressor, it's a rifle. So they have three gun competitions, but everyone's running around with suppressed pistols. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Anyway. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's like, it's like pulling teeth yeah, out it's here like, to get a suppressor. Like, right? so I guess it so. technically would be the same because. Yeah, because you can't have suppressors here. The process to get the, the handgun in and of itself is, is just as tedious, if not more, than us more trying so. to get suppressors here, I guess. So I guess more so, yeah, more so. It's, it's, and, and I'm not talking um, Glocks. I mean, we're talking like mm. Ruger, um, you know, Mark IVs. Uh, okay, the, you know, the so like and, that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that okay. sort of thing. Anywho, the process in the UK is everybody and everybody, everybody and anybody who has legal possession of a firearm has a, uh, they're on a central computer database like a um it's, it's it's a national one so if you were stopped driving a motor vehicle it flags up this person is a firearms owner okay. just automatically okay which i know americans are like oh my god but yeah. <laughs> that's that's just the way it is in the uk mm -hmm. so all the legally held firearms are accounted for not gonna lie that makes perfect sense well, I'm not talking about the illegally held firearms, of which there are many, but all the legally held firearms. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get to that. <laughs> oh yeah. So, so, so when 
they had a recall. So, for example, when they had the, the gentleman who ran around with an AK, mm -hmm. shot lots of people, and the government said, okay, we're not going to allow those. They just wrote to everybody who had military-style firearms and said, you've got three months to hand them in. Mm. And that was it. Boom, mm. all done. So, what do you mean I got three months to hand them in? Am I getting compensation? I need the money back. Okay. So? I'll do it, but I need the money back. Because most yeah. people think they, it's like, oh, no, they're never going to go door to door. And I've always, I've always made the argument. I said they don't have to. Um, no, they don't have to. No, if they, they just write to you and say, yeah. yeah, if they have a database, they just write and say, hey, you know. And if you don't hand it in and you don't have a receipt, okay, well, now you're a criminal. Yeah. So in America, I say the, the problem, well, not the problem, but the issue is that the genie's out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. The guns are out. And people have them legitimately, legally, and there is no database. So if you were to conceptually say, okay, you know, we're going to ban... There is no database. There's no way you can... You know what I'm saying? AR, the 15s. Well, how? Especially in Florida. How? <laughs> and, and that's the simple question. How would you do that? How, how would you... Practice? Well, we would just make them illegal. Okay, but how are you going to get them? How are you physically going to find out who has them, where they are? And then if, if you have some people who fairly reasonably or not, depending on their own kind of where they draw their line in the sand, if they decide, well, no, I'm not going to, who's going to go and get them? Because I haven't, I haven't met one police officer here that says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go and, I'll go and get that. Yeah. <laughs> Just, no, we're going <laughs> to precipitate problems. Yeah. So it, it isn't the same culture. And also, they're going to, uh, America, they're going to take that as an act of civil war or something. So, you know, let's be honest, the, the whole American culture was based upon, um, the common man forming militias and rising up against the British. You guys. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's ingrained in that, in, that, um, in, in that mindset. And I try to explain to people as well, a lot of people, they forget their history. Like, it, I'm, I'm not talking hundreds of years ago. Like, you yeah. know, the Wild West was in the late 1800s. That's, that's, that's your grandparents' time when people legitimately had to defend themselves, when people, I mean, they still do, they still use rifles for hunting and you still have to have powerful handguns to defend yourself. And if you say you don't, I challenge you to walk around like the wilderness here. And when you come across one of those big pigs running around, <laughs> you, you want something, even, even if it's just to make noise, it is not the same. Hold on now, like a boar? That'd be in the UK, them videos I'd be seeing, y'all got boars out there? Y'all don't got a lot of other animals, but y'all got boars. That them is dangerous. In culture, you know, in in England we don't have huge pigs, we don't have wolves, we don't oh, have okay. bears, we don't have moose, we don't have <laughs> there's just these big things running around yeah. trying to eat you. Don't we don't have them. We also we also we don't have bloods and crips. Mm. We don't have <laughs> you know what I mean? We, Allegedly. We, we, we don't have those issues. Now, now we do have gangs and we do have armed criminality, but in the UK, the armed criminality are kind of a little bit savvy. They, they shoot each other with great regularity, but they don't shoot innocents because that brings a lot of heat. So there are near daily shootings in the capital. You just don't hear about them. That's... I, I, I try telling, I, man, I'm telling you, I try telling people that. I'm like, we, we, our society is extremely open. All our information, all our, all our bad information, all our good information, all our dirt is out there for the world to see because of the way our, society, our, our, our country is structured as far mm -hmm. as our First mm -hmm. Amendment rights and all the information mm -hmm. that we have and mm -hmm. that we're allowed to be put out there. Whereas a, a lot of other countries are not. I'm not even going to lie. Um, I wouldn't believe what he was saying and, unless I was, unless I'm who I am, you know what I'm saying? I watch Scar City videos every day, almost. So uh, every day he got a shooting going there. So he ain't lying. As liberal with the information that they give out to the world with respect to their dirt. Um, no, it's not. It's not just being liberal. It's just Scar City. They just don't talk about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about a thing now, which isn't a secret. So I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not breaching any laws. There is a, an, an ongoing task force in the capital. It's called Operation Trident. You might oh, be able yeah. to look it up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The raison d'être for Operation Trident is to tackle black on black shootings. That's it. That's crazy. That's all they do. That's all they do. That's full time. I know about Trident, but I didn't know that was the only, like, I didn't know black on black was the thing. I thought it was just like armed criminal versus armed criminal. I didn't know it was.
And they were one of the Crazy. biggest service, like that was one of the biggest things I did, yeah. was run around the capital, mm -hmm. taking guns from young black men mm -hmm. who were trying to shoot each other. Because the same problems in, in America are the same problems in the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. And I'm not, and it's all to do with societal inequalities. Mm -hmm. It's all to do with upbringing. It's all to do with um, a lack of opportunities. And that kind of, you know, you, you, when you get into the communities and you work with these young people <coughs> and you build them up and you, you, you set them up for success, they become successful. But if, yeah. if, if the inner cities have nothing for them to do with, with poor educational systems yeah. and no job prospects. Man, I know a lot of people that was just robbing people just, just out of boredom. Ain't got nothing else to do. Might as well rob, get a little money, go buy a little fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally. And they're thinking, well, yeah. how am I going to make money? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then they look at their buddy who's driving a nice BMW or an Audi, and they're like, I want mm, that. <laughs> I want that, yeah. yeah. Might rob your buddy. Yeah. You know and so, mean? anyways, there, 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 there is a lot of armed criminality in England. Mm. It just... It just doesn't get reported. I mean, I actually so. saw recently. I mean, this was probably yesterday. And that's why people think that England is sweet. Man, ain't nothing going on in England. I'm from just going over here. No, no, they just don't be reporting. See, I didn't know they didn't report, which is wild. People need to know. You know what I'm saying? But it makes sense. <laughs> and also, his comment about gangs only shooting gang members not civilians mm. maybe it's not that common of a thing but i beg to differ like coming from chicago yes civilians are always civilians are never really civilians but they're always now let me rephrase that civilians are civilians but our civilians are also strapped in chicago they have legal firearms to defend themselves so in Chicago, you walking around with a different mindset, like, man, I ain't finna bother, dude, man. <laughs> he probably got one on him, too. Like, I ain't going. But here, it's like, not, not, like, it's probably seldom that it happens. Uh, but the way the music be talking about uh, it, you I know. Wish I, had, I wish I kept the video, but I literally saw, like, it was basically guys running around with knives chasing another guy trying to stab him. Mm, he's talking about the SJ video. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it looked so eerily similar to what you would see in Southside Chicago, except they were using knives in this instance. Uh, Let, I'm going to keep it real with you. That comment, like, that doesn't happen on the South. That doesn't happen. Like, he just laid it out like that. It don't happen. Like, we don't see somebody chase them down. Or in Chicago, they don't see nobody. To, like, it's more like a setup. Like it's back door, you getting back door by this person, you getting set up by this person, now you're in a situation type situation. But that, uh, like, it doesn't seem it. I don't know. Um, we're in Southside Chicago or other places like. Is he from the Rock? Where are you from? I get they'd be using firearms. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and, I, I, and know. I always say it, it's like, it's, 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 it's going to be a culture problem. And then the culture mm -hmm. is largely driven from the environment that. The vast majority of these people are living in. And now, don't get me wrong. If, 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 yes, he is like there is that does happen. Like not that much no more. Like, you know, spinning blocks trying to get the back and blood. You know what I'm saying? Let me spin. Let me try to find my ops. If you happen to see him, okay, boom, bow, let's change. Like it do happen, but like, I just felt like he just said it like it was an everyday. Maybe it's maybe because I'm from there that I'm trying to downplay it, but. Maybe, I, never mind. And you know, I always make the analogy, I was like, you don't see well-to-do black kids in, in the suburbs doing drive-bys in Mercedes Benzes and BMWs. You, ju you just don't see it. Um, but it's a lot easier to- No, they in the crib doing class A's off their parents' fine china. Oh, Hyper-focus on the item, because I mean, I mean, at some point there was talks about banning certain knives in the UK, am I correct? <sighs> Uh, that's not, there's not talk of it. That is a thing. Yeah. You, 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 yeah, you, you can't own, you can't own certain types of knife. Um, now. Which is cat because the most commonly used knife is a kitchen knife. Can't ban a kitchen knife or a screwdriver. Can't ban tools.
it's just to put that into context. Um, if you were to walk around the streets of London, mm. um, what would you be doing or where would you be that the police would randomly stop and search you? Um, in, in that's kind of, yeah, yeah. But if, so you could carry, so like my, my uncle, this is a bad story. My uncle who came to visit from Trinidad, half my family are from uh, the Caribbean. Oh. He came uh, to visit me and as a gift, he brought me a knife. And he, he's handing it to me outside the Tower of London, which is a big, and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't carry this yeah, around because it's, it. yeah, it, it was a really nice. Um, how did he get it through customs? How did, I had it, what? Uh, um, locking blade, um, uh, I, I forget the brand, but a great knife, very illegal, can't have it. So I was like, let me just, this, yeah, let me just, move along with that um, and he's just carrying it around because he's like oh, I brought you a present um, you can basically have a Swiss army knife that's that's it so it has to, it can't be a locking blade it can't be more than three inches in length um, you can't carry big swords and machetes around or anything like that so it's like flying um, <laughs> yes yeah it's, well, well, well I mean, you almost can't, you can't um, carry, yeah but and, yeah. and 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 even if you do carry a knife you kind of have to have a reason for it so like if you were carrying a box cutter mm-hmm. now if you were going to Okay, when he says that, the first thing that comes to my mind, my reason for carrying it is for protection. I'm in London. I need protection. I'm from, like, me personally, you stop me, and I'm in London, and I got it on me. I'm, uh, it's for protection. Then I have to have a reason. I'm not from here. I just want to be protected. I hear the stories. Is that good enough? You're from work, and you had a box cut, and you said, well, I work in a warehouse. Oh. They'd be like, okay, fine. But if you're, if you're out 8 o'clock, Friday night in in a clubbing area, and you've got a box cutter. You will be arrested for carrying a box cutter gotcha. because that is. Um, there was a time when they were really popular. What they would do, they would, they would put two blades in the box cutters and put a penny in between the blades. So now you've got two thin blades, and when you slash somebody, oh, wow. you can't stitch it up. You see, it leaves a bad scar. Wow. So, 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 so the young violent people never heard of that. That that see the UK moving wild. That's wild and diabolical. I need to go hold you. That's very diabolical. People are very creative with their knife work. They're very, very violent. <laughs> That's dig a D. That's dig a D type energy. <laughs> Who else is that? That's, that's, that's because that's what they have easily accessible. Yeah, they. Yeah, they no, do it's, that. it's it's pretty nutty, man. Um, but I mean, but yeah. again, like you, you get the similarities between America and in the UK in terms of just the the, the kind of inherent culture, so to speak, in terms of mm-hmm. where the vast majority of the violence is coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Generally speaking, coming from very, very specific. You're the guy with. Uh, he got his own commercial on his own video. Hey, this dude is moving aggressively great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's different. I'm going to make me a commercial. Areas, and then mm-hmm. I'm assuming in those areas, just like in America, everyone in the inner city isn't violent. Not even no, close. no, not at all. No. Um, but the, there's a minority of people, I'm assuming, same in the UK that are responsible for the vast majority of, of the violence. Absolutely, activity. absolutely. You know? And particularly in the capital, what's interesting is is they those groups will form along um, either uh, ethnic lines or racial lines or just where they happen to live lines. So you get gotcha. a postcode of gangs, mm-hmm. which is nothing more than just luck as to where you grow up. You know, it's just then you've got. Um, you've, you've got the more organized gangs, you've got the Russian gangs, the Turkish gangs, uh, the Chinese gangs, <laughs> the, the homegrown British gangs, <laughs> you know, and they all kind of... Hold on, man, you gotta talk about the Albanians, the Albanians too. Well, they're up there with the more organized. Vie for territory and they do their thing, but they kind of keep, they're kind of weird, they kind of keep themselves to themselves. They just, you know, they're very violent within their own within little their own. circles, but they don't, you know, they doesn't bleed out anywhere. <laughs> and then of course we've got you know, we've got the terrorist things that go on, obviously, all the time, which is an issue. But <laughs> I mean, I mean, there is a, there's also that dynamic that I mean, you guys, you don't have a massive body of water to the degree that we do, separating us from pretty much the rest of the world, right? There, mm-hmm. there's, there's that border issue where it's easily, to, it's easy to cross borders to and fro, um, mm-hmm. generally speaking, um, and, and so you kind of get that. Which is weird because you kind of also get like you just pointed out there's a multicultural aspect to it 
that mm-hmm. is also very similar to what we have here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. And so now in, in your time, I'm going to kind of go into like gun, gun geek mode a little bit here. Sure. Um, me. What, <laughs> what was what was largely the platform of choice when you were when you were kind of out doing your thing? So I spent the majority of my time undercover. Beretta. And my, my go to was a Glock 19. Oh, OK. I didn't expect that. I thought something else. Yeah, I, I've put tens of thousands of rounds through a Glock 19 in, in training. I also had a 17 and a 26, which mm. would depend purely upon. So the 17 I tended to use, like, I wish I had some photos to show you. Maybe I had a seven. I had two 17s, a 19 and a 30 SF. I'll send you some and you okay, can kind of I can put them, put them up. Yeah. But um, I, I've got an amusing one of me put in the up. basement of Buckingham Palace, actually, where I've got a ridiculous loadout because they wanted me to do multiple roles and I'm just standing there with all this gear thinking I'm, I'm, I'm operationally effective here because I've got so much kit. But anyway, um, the, the, the 17 was typically on a drop leg, which I would use in, in when we're wearing the coveralls. Mm-hmm. The 19 or the 26 was what I would have if I was um, covertly deployed. And then when it came to the carbine, it was either going to be an MP5 mm-hmm. or we had the SIG uh, variant of an MP4. Of, okay. Uh, of of uh, uh, AR a fifteen, so we yeah we would use um, an M M four variant, which was a Sig one. I think it's five one six. Chicago uh, um, ARs are popular. ARs, mini Drakes. Um, now we had other things as well available. Um, I I liked the Remington eight seventy shotgun because of its simplicity. Mm-hmm. We did have the Benelli's. Um, I just preferred. The, the Remington like legal usage um, because my role is a breacher so I would be taking out the hinges or shooting out the tires I, I shot a lot of cars in the UK really? yeah yeah let's talk about that <laughs> <laughs> like, right. let's talk about that um, so <laughs> you, don't, you don't hear that often right because and it sounds very movie-esque you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 what would happen is if, so, for example, if you've got a kidnapped victim or just a major, you know, a, a guy that's carrying a gun, or th- mm-hmm. there are bad people in the car, we need to stop that car. So we would do vehicle tactics to bring it to a stop, but of course they they don't want to stop. They're going to try and keep going. Now, if if they show any signs of trying to kind of force the way out, mm-hmm. we we had uh, a dispersible round called a Hatton round, and they come in different flavors. You get lead ones, iron ones, copper ones, and basically it's just. It's compressed lead powder in like a wax kind of thing to hold it in shape. Gotcha. The, essentially what happens is when you shoot a tire, it will punch a hole in the tire, which is just a little hole. Mm-hmm. But then when it hits the wheel, now if it's an, an iron wheel, it, it punches a hole in it about yay big, mm-hmm. and then it goes poof, and disperses. But if it's an alloy wheel, it just cracks the wheel. Okay. So it kind of splits the wheel in half, oh, okay. and you get instant tire deflation. And if it's an alloy wheel, now the wheel won't even turn; it gets all tied up in the rotors and all that kind of stuff. So, so, so and also the the tactical distraction it had because you've got the people in the car; they're yeah. all trying to get out. They're like, "Well, oh, you know, we're roughy tufties. We've just robbed a bank or whatever they've done." Yeah. Someone like me jumps out with a balaclava on with a pump action shotgun. I go and go and shoot out one of their wheels. Run They're just like because it's England and that doesn't happen. <laughs> but yeah it does and we yeah. would um yeah it's it's not it's not a approved anti-personnel round mm-hmm. um that was always a matter of discussion as to if they pointed gun at us and you happen to have it with you that would that would there'd be few questions to answer if you shot someone with it because it'd be a nasty injury but yeah. um yeah, yeah. No, we, I mean that's, yeah. that's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me yeah. um so what did yeah, i'm not gonna lie that do sound elite i ain't <laughs> I ain't never heard of that kind of round, but sound cool. But bringing you to America. Well, um, uh, I met a girl and got married, and then due to political, personal, financial reasons, we moved over to the states. And you kind of have to reinvent yourself. Yeah. Um, I came over with all these experiences, and I became an NRA instructor. Um, I have um, uh, a training company that I do on the side. Um, but it is just on the side because there are some, and I hope I hope we get to talk about that a little bit later. There are yeah. some kind of training issues no, within can, US can culture. If you want. Oh yeah. yeah okay. So, so first and foremost, let me be absolutely clear. I'm I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment. I think I think it's fantastic. However, 
it does alarm me that many, many people, in fact, the majority of people, they, they just kind of go out and get a gun. Mm. And they've probably been shown how to load it and shoot it by a family member or a friend or something like that, but they don't actually know how to use it. Partic what state is this guy in? That will, that will, that's the next question. Like, you're, if you're in Florida, if you're in Texas, if you're in the South, then that, this, this statement holds true. But if you're up north, like, up north, like, mid, mid, like Chicago, uh, Denver, or anywhere up there, like, that's not true. You have to take a whole class with an instructor and everything. Like, you can get your FOID. Now, he, I will tell you this. There's something called a FOID, firearm identification card. Uh, or what is it? Firearms? Whatever. It allows you to act on your Second Amendment and have a gun inside of your house. And you don't need any training for that. No, you do not. And that's anywhere. But if you want concealed carry, you have to take a class. You have to take a class. You have to, you know, be firearm certified. You got to put in your hours at the range. Okay, but if he's talking about just a Floyd, yes, he's correct. Particularly of course in a right. confrontational situation at the kind of range how to use it. Particularly in a confrontational situation at the kind of ranges right. that confrontational situations actually occur in, mm -hmm. which are really, really close. Yeah. It's not going to be 15 yards at a static target that's just going to stand in there. You're not going to be able to get into your nice isosceles stance. You're not going to get this nice, beautiful sight picture. You're not going to be able to and squeeze off like a nice little group. It's, it's not going to happen. It's, it's going to be up close, personal, dirty, uh, scary as hell. Um, so it's kind of like martial arts versus MMA. Yes, yeah, kind of. Although I would, I would like MMA is better. It's kind of like Look, yeah, when I say yeah, martial arts. Yeah. I'm talking like you're more, you more kind of yes, yes, traditional yeah. style of like, say, for instance, taekwondo, things of that nature. Yeah, um, yeah, and then they step in occasionally and get their asses handed to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is sad, but but, but true. Um, for those watching, I'm a fifth degree black belt in taekwondo, so I can bash them all. I <laughs> I know exactly what it feels like to step in a cage. I, I know. I know That's what it feels awesome. like. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When they lock that cage and it's just you and a dude and a ref, and you go, why am I here? What? what, 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 what am I? Yeah, don't get in there trying to be technical. It's just like when boxers come and they be like, not boxers, but like, yeah, black belts, they get into a street fight. It may work on somebody that ain't that, that is not adept at fighting in the streets, but... You run up on me and you try to kick me or do something funny, you better land it. Because after that, I'm dropping you. You know what? Let me just press the button. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they go fight. You're like, oh, shit. I better... <laughs> yeah. Like, they, like, they, like everybody has a plan to get punched in the face. That is, that is very true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have the broken eye socket to... Um... That is so factual. Everybody has a plan until they get punched. Because a lot of people knows how to throw punches and knows the technique and know this. And, but have you ever took a punch how's that chin uh, to prove it but anyway yeah, I, um, I, got, I yeah. got punched in the face with gloves so i mean for me it still hurts it still hurts but but regardless um i i i do think there needs to be a an a, a sensible discussion a debate a a coming together of of minds and i don't mean the extremes on either end i mean mm. sensible people that actually yeah i got jumped 30 on five they did put me in the hospital but i never once got not never once fell asleep never once went to sleep we've taken all of that you hear me unfortunately have something to offer and say how can we improve firearm safety how can we make people more aware about the benefits of firearm ownership versus the drawbacks of firearm ownership and how you should be responsible in where you keep them. Like, you know, the tragedies we hear about where children get hold of guns. Mm -hmm. And, and I, just, I just want to face plant because I'm like, oh, that's just, that just feeds into the anti-gun narrative oh, yeah. so, so awfully because that individual has been irresponsible. And there are existing very comprehensive gun laws that legislate against that. We don't need to make anything else up. Mm -hmm. 
it's already there in place. We just need to enforce it properly and educate people as to why it's important. I, I think I get your I get your frustration because I yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm a responsible gun owner. Don't 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 put that, y'all hear me on here talking. Don't think I'm not responsible. You know what I'm saying? I am a very responsible gun owner. Um, I have a like when I was in Chicago, I had a I had. Well, my daughter wasn't born yet. She was very, very small. She couldn't do anything. But, like, I had a dresser next to me. It had a lock. Couldn't just go in there. You know what I'm saying? I also had a safe with all my other stuff in that was locked. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it was unloaded. No, it was loaded. Because one in the head as well. Because I lived in Chicago. I'm not getting ready. You know what I'm saying? Cocking that thing back is the <laughs> life or death. I'm ready already. But now you know that I have a daughter and she's older, I wouldn't keep one in the head. Just in case she happens to somehow, some way get into a safe or something like that. It's like I just wouldn't keep one one in the head anymore. I'm in I'm in the same I'm in kind of in the same realm from from the standpoint when it comes to training, right? Hypothetically think, speaking. I'm in talking. a perfect world, I'd I i would make it absolutely mandatory to get training in a perfect world however but, yeah and i have firearms training as well so. however <laughs> because we don't live in a perfect world because we do have political figures who are in positions of power who try to utilize who try to utilize mm -hmm. i tried to get a um, gun license i have a ford but i tried to get a carry conce concealed carry in the city of chicago and pfft, i had to, I, t I took the classes i went through it twice actually and they denied me both times. They was, no, sir, not you. It was, you cannot walk around with that thing on you. You have too many violent cr crimes on your background. Which now I can get one, though, because after seven years with no crimes, you can go back and get one. So I've been chilling for seven years. Unobtainable. <laughs> My bad. Utilize a mandate as a way to further restrict people's ability to get firearms mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i i can't i can't be a proponent of that within the real no. world right yeah um because i know how that'll be used but and i always say this in my videos like i absolutely believe there's absolutely no reason why you should get a firearm and not get some type of training above and beyond just understanding the basic mechanics i agree and that's mm -hmm. that's that's me personally yeah and that's exactly how i feel yeah, yeah. I, I i i always say um i would take somebody with a three hundred dollar gun, like I, if if I gave you a high point, um, what are the, what's that one they've got? I nearly bought one because it's so funny. Um, the Yeet <laughs> Cannon. Yeet. Yeah, okay. Bro is talking about a Yeet Cannon and a high point. If you get into a shootout with either one of them, you're going to be unalive. That thing gonna jam. I mean, I guess it's all about trigger control, but like, still, I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I, I would take someone with a yeet cannon uh -huh. with a thousand dollars worth of training <laughs> over somebody with the latest uh, Sig X, whatever, yeah. with no training. Yeah, no, because the person with the yeet cannon is going to know what they're doing and exactly. they're going to be accurate and they're going to be effective. Whereas oh, I've got this great gun, and do you know how to use it? I don't have to use it. I, I don't know. I mean, it's no different. <laughs> It falls out, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's no different than, than buying a supercar and um, yeah. really, honestly, only driving it on the streets and never really, maybe even worse than this, because at least with a, with a supercar, you get the experience of continuously driving it down the street. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. with the firearm, generally speaking, you don't necessarily get that. Um, but that, I think where it runs into a problem is because there's there's that political component, right? How it can yes. be misused and mishandled. Um, but then there's also the, 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 the financial. Um, I know like for, for me, that's not that big of an issue. I and mean, plus I have the liberty because of who I am within the space, I can go and get the necessary types of training and even more sure. so, right? Sure. Um, so I think there's there's that aspect of- I'm not even gonna lie. I'm looking at bro's wall behind him. He got at least 20 bands on that wall, <laughs> maybe more. That's very limiting. And then 20, you got the time component and then so forth and so on. There are a lot of barriers, right? That are yeah. naturally in place that prevent people from being able to get the training they should get. That said, this should be the heart of the conversation about firearms in the country, is figuring yeah. out how do, we, how do we create an environment that allows people to be able to do and get the necessary training that they should get. The 
problem is when we have that conversation, then all this other stuff starts getting thrown into it. Banning AR-15s and, and uh, extended background checks that won't do anything, so forth and so on. Um, yeah. and it, and it just confuses the point, confuses the issue. Um, so I work in healthcare right now. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's, that, you know, that, that's how I pay uh, the bills. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of people who are having acute um, mental issues, mm-hmm. acute psychological problems. And you get people talking about, oh, if you've ever been uh, under medical care for a psych issue, and they're like, whoa, whoa, time out, time out, time yeah. out. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, that's one of them. That's one of them, I feel. Ain't it? Ain't that one? Like, it got to be like a major psychological issue. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Because a lot of these, the majority of these people, it's temporary. Yeah. They're, going have, you know, they're going through a rough time, going through a divorce, um, a bereavement, a job loss or something. And or you start making it so there are consequences like losing all their guns, they're not going to go and get the help they need. Exactly. So, so, so those sort of conversations, it's, it's, it's like you say, it's that um, political side where we should just ban everyone who's had a psychic. No, no, we shouldn't. You don't need to. It's not necessary. Um, we, need to, we need to mandate that everybody has to have training. Okay, when you do that, and then that will be, used, then that will be weaponized. Yes, yep. Then that will be used to prevent the people being able to get... But at the same time, like you, I'm like, everybody should be able to get what they want. Mm-hmm. But I just personally really, really strongly urge you to get appropriate training. So that- Man, they would be disgusted with Florida's new laws, man. You don't need no license. You don't need no class. You don't need nothing. All you need is an ID in the state of Florida to walk into anywhere and grab something. You don't need a FOID. You don't need a carry conceal you don't need zero hours of training you can just walk into the store and grab some and you know this is a volatile state you know what i'm saying they got um that stand your ground wall like if anybody do anything wrong and you went to walmart and you grabbed you you know something and now boom you're safe and you're effective in whatever you want to do. If you, if, if you want, like, like if you want to learn to hunt, I'm not your guy. I'm not because I don't know enough about hunting. Yeah. But if you want to learn to fight with a gun up close, well, let's talk. Yeah. Got it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I mean, I'm right. I'm right there with you. I mean, you can even say the same thing from a legal standpoint, right? Because you know, I'm a, mm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a member of USCCA. Um, and one of Me the too. Biggest, yeah. See. And yeah. High five. Of, I didn't. Yep. I didn't even know that. <laughs> so, um, yep. And you know, for me, one of the biggest issues. Uh, you know, I hear people talk all the time about certain scenarios and situations where they feel like they would use a firearm to protect themselves. And I'm kind of like, oh, it's a bit dicey. It's pretty good to be a member of that. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you carry this many weapons, because they'll send a rep out to represent you. You know what I'm saying? In any case that goes on or whatever. Probably not. It's not going to be yeah, yeah. as clear. Yeah, be real it. careful. Yeah, right? be real careful. Yeah. Uh, but when you start getting this information and you actually start taking the thought process, because one thing, and I suffered from this too when I started carrying a firearm. Um, I would always, every every possible situation I thought I could find myself in, everything happened perfectly. <laughs> everything was perfect. Like, it was like, I see the guy coming, I know exactly what he's gonna do, and I'm like, I'm gonna have time to get this beautiful draw, and then I'm gonna like, stop, and then, you know, all this, you know, all of that. And once I started allowing myself to start letting my mind go to the dirty, and by dirty meaning like everything doesn't happen perfectly. What if I don't see it coming? What if I'm not really sure if I can shoot or not? That starts changing your perspective and your mindset about how you go into the real world when you carry mm-hmm. a firearm. So now you've already kind of, your mind's already kind of gone there. So it's not the first time you're experiencing things going completely bad and nothing going perfectly. Um, Welcome to the life of a police officer. Yeah. You go. Welcome to the life of a Chicago <laughs> youth. What the- you know what I'm saying? No way. Nothing's ever happening perfectly in Chicago. Like you could be walking down the street minding your business, and you gotta up that up the up the skull all of a sudden. You getting into a whole battle of of firearms randomly. It'd be Chicago's crazy. I'm not gonna sit here and like say it's not. It is, especially if you're from there, living in the neighborhoods. That I like, really like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and th- those kind of oh, funny little gray areas and and weirdness, and it's not perfect. Um, 
like for example when when cops shoot someone in the back mm. and everyone goes oh my god they shot them in the back they're running away and it's like well okay well this is how you get shot in the back <laughs> like, <laughs> like like you know <laughs> that's how you get shot in the back um yeah there's all and i'm not saying okay first off time out i'm not saying that all police officers don't need to be looked at i'm not saying their actions are impeccable every time i'm not saying that there aren't bad apples um but most of the cops that I talk to now are extremely low in morale. They're extremely concerned about. Uh, th I mean, they they they're they're terrified of being involved in a shooting because yeah. of the consequences yeah. that would happen. Um, and I try and kind of pass it on to c civilians as well. Like when I'm training them, and saying, okay, so let's say legally, from a criminal point of view, you 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 in you survive a lethal threat encounter and you uh -huh. shoot somebody and they're dead okay what about the civil side of things mm -hmm. are, you, are you going to be able to get away with that what about the sleepless nights that you're going to go through as you replay it over and over and over again what about your mental health what about the friends and family that are going to Probably. stop being your friends and family because you're now a murderer I'm alive what the fuck I could care less if you start if I get into a situation and I gotta up and I gotta produce a firearm to protect myself and I end up unaliving somebody and you're not my friend because of it and I was simply defending myself in the city of Chicago, like knowing all of that my back and you decide not to be my friend, you were never my friend anyway. You wanted to see me gone at the end of the day. I could, me personally, I could care less if somebody not my friend because I'm a M, because I got an M charge for defending myself, me and my family. Like no way. I could, I really don't care. And you ask how would I sleep? Yes, of course. You have PTSD at the end of the day because of the entire situation, but I wouldn't lose no sleep for nobody that tried to to to, to take my life. like a baby <laughs> what about me personally? how you're gonna have to move house because the family of who you, they now know where you live what about <laughs> there's this huge thing he right about that now you will have to move about that current house after that a little ptsd you're gonna be moving a lot different in public and things of that nature but i'm alive at the end of the day and i'm taking that as a blessing I, I mean, I, I carry a gun every day, and I really don't want to use it. Dude, I'm I right really with you. I was actually, I'm, I'm, no, that doesn't, he's right. It doesn't change the facts. Like, I'd rather not. But, you know, living in Chicago, like, like I'm really telling y'all, like, living in Chicago, you bet, like, if you think you're about to get into a one-on-one -on -one fist fight in Chicago, I don't, I don't, I, I don't. You not fit fight. You, there's no fist fights in Chicago, so don't think you're gonna run into somebody on the street and you're gonna run up to them and you know what I'm saying? Cause this ain't happening. I was having a conversation with a friend once, and we were like, "When you really sit down and think about everything, yeah. all the collateral effects that happen after oh, you use your gun in self defense." Man, you really don't want to do it. Like you really, genuinely do not want to do it. I don't think um, about and it. And I've no. never really glorified the idea of it, but no. I know for a fact, man. I really like. I'm gonna if I if I have to use my gun in self defense, I'm gonna need therapy. I know that for a fact, um, because it's 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 that it's, it's just not something that you just want to do. Um, no, but nonetheless, there are there are some there are a lot of people out there who don't really understand that. No, and they're very gung ho about it. I, you know, I, I talk to them. I be wanting to say more than I can on here, so I'm just gonna sit here and listen. Just look at my face when he's saying same things. Their entire self defense plan is, I'll draw my gun and shoot them, and you're like, that's not a plan. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's just, that's just well, what, well, what if this happens? I'll draw my gun, I'll shoot them. Yeah. You, you're in a Walmart parking lot. What do you carry? I carry a, I carry a 1911-45 ACP. Oh my God, you're going to start shooting that in Walmart? <laughs> like, what are you thinking? And they look at me like, what? I'm like, the overpenetration alone, you're going to kill half a dozen people with that hand cannon. They're like, no, I won't. It's proven. Oh God, here we go. It, it, is, it, it is a great gun. Yeah. It is a great I love, gun. I love 1911s personally. Now, no, it is I am. not what I. It's not what I would. I like 1911s as well. They look all. Oh, they look amazing. Uh, 
I've 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 fired one at the range. I went through probably a hundred rounds in one, but it's cool. It's cool, man. I think they're single stack. I'm not really with the single stack. I like the double stack. I need 17, 18 bullets in mind. I'm not even going to lie to you. 33 Carry. if we really talking about it. But it is a great gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I mean, I'm truth be told, and I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, more, I'm leaning more towards the side. Give me a 1911 in 9mm more so than in 45. That, that's just yeah, because it's got the nice heavy slide. Yep. You got those, you have those follow up shots. You get more rounds in mm -hmm. there. That's that's a great great platform. It's it's the good platform with a better round because yeah. the nine mil plus P is performs just as well as a forty five. Yes, it does. You can look it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, no, I tell people that all the time. I was like, they, they asked yeah. me like, why do you carry nine? I was like, because with the advancements we have in bullet technology. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. they're, they're all, but the differences are marginal, if not exactly the oh, same. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so for me. Dude, my first ever, my first ever firearm legal uh, was a Glock, 7, Glock 30 SF. Well, that's a 45 ACP. So compared to the other ones that I start getting later, I, I haven't used the 30 in a minute, man. I'm not even at the range. Like, it's, I, be, I like the 9 better. <laughs> it's, it's comfortable. Me, I'm just kind of like, yeah, give me a nine. I want as many rounds as I can shoot fast and accurate. And now I got a friend in Florida. Like he, he used to live in, um, he used to stay in the in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, he's a he's like a gun specialist. Like he knows everything about every new bullet coming out. He knows everything. So it's like, oh, okay, y'all gonna get them videos soon, man. The lit one at the range, man. Yep. Absolutely. And it, this is kind of morbid, but another offshoot of working in EMS is um, is I get to see quite a few gunshot injuries mm -hmm. and I get and I'm kind of I'm kind of a bit nerdy about it. I kind yeah. of I can say, oh, that's interesting. Look, so, at, yeah. Yeah, look at the path, look at how that worked or look at how this person has like been shot eight times and they're OK. Oh, this yeah. person only got shot once. And, and mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really... <laughs> the only consistency I can really say is if, if you're a little bit, how can I put this politely? Um, if there's more of you, uh -huh. you seem to soak up rounds a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, though. There's more of you, there's more fat that it could possibly hit. You can miss vital organs. <laughs> that's, just, that's about the only thing I can gotcha, say. Is like, gotcha. Yeah, these, these people that are a bit more... more that's good. You know, I've never thought about that. They seem I mean, just when, to when, soak up the rounds. I mean, when, you, when you think about it, it makes sense. It's all, I guess it would be no different than, you know, if I had a, a ton of clothing on or something of the sort. Um, there's a that's, lot of... That's there, about the only consistency, yeah. But just the, the ballistic trajectory as it hits, mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, they go in, sometimes they go in and out. Sometimes they go in and... Whoo, sometimes they go and hit a bone and cream off. Sometimes they go and hit a bone and shatter it. Sometimes crazy stuff. They get shot in the head, it hits the skull, goes around underneath the scalp comes out the other side. And you think they've been shot in the head, but they actually haven't. They've just been shot like around. around it. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. Um, weird stuff. They're very weird. Yeah, that, is, um, that is nice. Yeah, I and almost always they're unfortunate. Sometimes amusing. And when I say that, it's, it's the ones that kind of roll in, mm -hmm. get kicked out of a car, <laughs> <laughs> flopping around. They're like, what happened? I don't know. Who shot you? I don't know. Why? No idea. You're like, come, okay. come on, look, yeah, I don't maybe. care. I don't yeah. care. Just, just tell me what happened so I yeah. can help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shot. Help me. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, no, I totally get it, man. But um, but you know, I mean, there's this, there's so much we could cover here. Um, oh, we, we could go on and on yeah, all day. Here, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But perfect excuse to have you back on. So yeah, absolutely. So, so we can kind of um um split it up. But essentially speaking, yeah, I mean, the main thrust is UK and the US. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. They speak kind of the same, same language. language. <laughs> Not really. Roughly speaking. Um, I will say this. I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the way you guys are able to mimic the American accent. Because I, oh, I can't. It, it's difficult to mimic the uh, UK accent. It's way easier, I feel, for a UK person to mimic the American accent. 
do it at all. Really? Oh, okay. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Maybe I'm just, going, I'm just going, you know, maybe I'm just going off the actors and the actresses. Probably, yeah. Yeah. yeah cause well, I, they I, are good. Yeah, yeah, they are good. Very good. Because half the time I'm like, I didn't know they were Fox American. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it happens all the time. So um, I'll give you guys that. I'll give you guys that. I, yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of modulated my accent. It's become flatter and more neutral. Mm -hmm. Like from, you know, when I was working in London, I had to be a bit more like Jason Statham. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, mate. All right, Tree, cool now. And how's it going? I don't know, then, Jason gives me yeah. a little bit of gives a little bit of that with like an undertone of Irish, <laughs> you know. Like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, you know they're not the same cultures. It is inappropriate and and um, I, um, just it's it's not an argument that's going to go anywhere when you yeah. when you try to say yeah, but in the UK they did this, so we should do it. It's like yeah, it's, it's not, not the same, same. culture. It's no. it's not going to work. There are legit. Yeah, good. Thank you. I'm glad you're saying it, man. Cause I'll be seeing like every time I do a gun video or a, a, a like a knife video, there's a weird like there's like real weird people that be like, well, our our at least we don't have this type of shooting all the time. Like, bro, that's not something to down somebody on. Like, you think you cool because you ain't gotta go through that? Like, I mean, salute. But this is a different area, like. For you to try to prove a point by saying that is weird to me. That's a, that's Logistical a, problems to overcome, cultural problems, and practicalities of it. I just don't. I just don't think it works. Now, I I also do think that we need to have uh, sensible debates, discussions. That there, there is some yeah. problems that we have to address. We can't walk away from and ignore and say, "Oh, it's just." It's all down to this. It's all down to that. we. You know, we need to say, okay, well, how can we try to stop inappropriate people doing inappropriate things? And and I would love to be at that table and try to thrash my ideas out. But I think the problem it, with it's, it, a, it's it's complicated. And that's but that's just it. I think there's this um, incessant desire to. Here you go. If you get caught with an illegal firearm, you get ten years. If you get caught with an illegally modified firearm with a switch on it, you get twenty five years. Fed time. <laughs> that a de that's a deterrent. In a, that's ain't nobody doing that. That's like New York. That's New York for real, though. Oversimplifying New York, and get a quick it. solution, and, no. and in doing yeah. so, that's where you end up with this kind of um, conversational stalemate, where yeah. the conversation can't go anywhere because we're, we're oversimplifying what is essentially an extremely complex issue. Yeah, and so the, the, the longer we do that, the more there's not going to really be any advancements as far as the conversation is concerned. Now, no, no, I definitely try to educate the masses as much as possible, at least from my perspective of the issue. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, our side is generally speaking more than willing to have that conversation with somebody on the other side. I don't know if I can say the same for the other side. Yeah, it tends to be very inflammatory and very emotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd logical to a degree, well. understandably so. I'm not I'm not so naive as to say, no, you know, no. like I don't understand why you're so emotional about people getting shot. Like, I, 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 I get. <laughs> but the, and I always try to say, that to, you know, people in England, it's like, okay, so, you know, and they say, well, why do you need a gun? And I say, okay, let's let's just pretend. Thank you. Come on, break this down because I got a lot of people ask me this too. The, why do you need a gun? Uh, where I live, there are no lethal threats. <laughs> Let's just pretend <laughs> the light goes away. I enjoy firearms. I enjoy shooting them. I enjoy yeah. going to the range and hanging out with my See, I ain't even thinking like that, but yeah, for sure. We, I definitely enjoy them too. These and sh shooting guns, because it's fun. Yeah. You could say the same thing about your sports car that you mentioned. There's no need to own a sports car that will do 100, 100 150, Absolutely 200 miles an hour. Unnecessary. There's no need for it. Let's ban them all. Let's get rid of them because they're unnecessary. Let's only have cars that do... 85 miles an hour and you know <laughs> but people are you can't do that why would you do that because it's fun can't you go like 160 on an autobahn in europe or something like that whatever it is i'm having a night nice, i have a performance car that goes nicely i don't drive it within the speed limit all the time i just um <laughs> but but i don't drive it at 150 miles an hour all the time either because well, i, I kind of there's not many places I'd be able to do that, but it, it would do that if I wanted to. You but enjoying, I, I enjoy, you're enjoying the gray, as I like to call it. I, I, yeah, I, I enjoy the performance. I enjoy the way it sounds. I enjoy the way it handles. I enjoy the way it moves. Um, I feel like a motorcycle is the gun of automobiles or 
vehicles or whatever you want to call it. Like there's no abs- there's absolutely no reason for them, but it's, it's just I got one, still got one. <laughs> you feel me? I have a motorcycle. That again, yeah, they're very fast. It's it's dangerous. There's no need to own a motorcycle <laughs> at See? all. Hell, I don't have a motorcycle <laughs> because I think it's dangerous. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. But I I've had the training. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of experience. Uh, I ride responsibly for me. Um, so why why should another group who have suffered loss, someone whose uncle, son, brother, the daughter has died on a motorcycle and feel that they're unnecessary and they, they decide to turn around and say, well, you can't have a bike. Well, that's yeah, not fair. Yeah. And it's the same kind of, and I think a lot of people miss that, that it, it's not it's not all about some kind of machismo. I want to run around. And the idiots that walk around Walmart with their open carry, with their inappropriate holsters and stuff, I'm just, I'm just like, oh God. Now, now you're going to get pushback for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. But yeah. you know the ones I mean, I'm, I'm not yeah. talking about the ones that look like they know what they're doing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, who... I, me personally, I'm not, <laughs> I've never open carried. Um, he in Texas or something? Where are you at? You got to be like down there somewhere. Open carry is wild. You in the South. Unless you count like when I'm kind of out and you know I'm hunting and doing stuff like that. That's not. Yeah. That's a different. That's a different yeah. environment. In yeah. in 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 an inner city, there's no need for it. It's, you just yeah, it's tactically unsound and and you scare people. Mm. You scare people. That'd be like me running around, I don't know, waving a sword around above my head. And people, what are you doing? Well, I'm allowed to have this. <laughs> Some, someone is going to be alarmed and distressed by that behavior, aren't they? So yeah. let's well, just I mean, there is it. a, you know, I've heard arguments that, <laughs> I've heard arguments on the contrary that say, you know, well, the more people do it, the more people get used to it. And then they'll get more, they'll get used to seeing firearms on, on people in the open um, versus kind of hiding it. Um, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. But, Tactically, um, I'm not really prone to open carry. Um, no. Culturally, I'm indifferent, honestly. I see it sometimes. Like, if I see, you know, like a guy's open carrying in Walmart, I'm kind of like. Okay. I'm going to say something that really. I agree. Like, tactically, it doesn't make sense. I like the element of surprise. So, I'm going to conceal this. But if you got yours and you choose to open carry, salute, man. You must be scared of something. You don't want nobody to even approach you. And that's what it is. You open carry. More power to you, but like you must fear a lot. You 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 fearful of something. So we we'll stay away from you anyway. You jumpy. <laughs> we will get some inflammatory remarks from your it. <laughs> from your listeners. People like me who have training, and there I, I have a lot of friends that are like this. Mm-hmm. So so they will laugh. You are just a holster for me. <laughs> I will. I can and will. I can and would take that from you. And you would not be able to stop me. Or I'll draw my gun and shoot you. No, yeah. no, you wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. And, and I know how retention holsters work. Kind of. And, and and bad people practice how to do it. They practice how to get cops guns. Mm. It's just. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I. The funny <laughs> thing is, he's not lying. He is not lying. He talked. He said attention holder. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Nah, man. I went from carrying at three o'clock to appendix because I like the idea of knowing exactly where my gun is and having mm-hmm. complete control of it all the time mm-hmm. um, versus mm-hmm. having it on the side, even though concealed. I don't like the idea that I don't know what's going on as far as person mm-hmm. people having access to it. Yeah, so it's I'm, within um, within your fighting arc. Exactly. Here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm 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 with you from that standpoint. I'm like I I not prone to open carry largely because I don't like the exposure. No, Especially no. walking around in the city, I just, I just don't. Yeah. Chicago, you can never be open, open clearing because they're taking your stuff. They, they will take your pistol. You're not paying attention. You go to pay for something, they will take it from you. I don't, I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to know. I want, I want to be a complete surprise. Like. I, I just actually what I'm going to do I'm going to be running away with everybody else <laughs> I'm going to be getting my nice fast car and driving away um, and at, once again he's not lying about that either listen even if I got that thing on me if it don't got nothing to do with me and mine sayonara <laughs> I would have to be cornered before that before, before you even knew it was yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's largely my, my, my kind of mentality from a Tinto carry standpoint is is my back needs to be against the wall. Me personally, I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell anybody else how they decide how they want to protect themselves. But nope. um, if I can find a way out, I will. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in a situation where I needed to. I tried to find a way out, and you know what I'm saying. That's that's me. Um, unless I'm in a situation where I'm with somebody that I truly care about, and they don't have the option or the ability to do that, mm -hmm. um, I'm not inclined to try to be a hero of sorts. Now, I can talk all this nonsense now, and then something go down, and I could find my. I could be in a situation where I could just leave, or I can shoot this guy real easily and stop everybody else from getting shot, and I probably will do that. Well, those. But yeah, th and that's, that's mm, yeah. Yeah. And that's okay now okay now now but let me rewind like if it's an active shooter situation and there's mass life at risk okay yeah now nah, i'm gonna try i'm gonna try if i'm by myself and i can get a good uh good good little you know what i'm saying without like putting myself at risk like I gotta try that. If you were in the right place at the right, right time, time there are lots so of examples it. of that happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There, see, there are the lots right of place, examples right where it's happened, and I, I, I take note of all the examples that 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 come up where some lunatic pulls a gun out in a shopping mall, they go bap bap, and then a concealed carry holder goes boom, exactly. and it's all over, and it yeah. doesn't make the news. <laughs> <laughs> it it just kind of comes up in these little feeds, yeah, disappears, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, wait, yeah. wait, that was an active shooter that yeah. got. See what I'm saying? Like th that would be the situation that I'd have to be in. I'd have to be like, like right behind the a. Uh, uh, I'd have to be right behind him out of his line of sight when he started when he started and then that's oh yeah got me one <laughs> you feel me stop it's stop by yeah. a good guy yeah no 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 no. look over here look over here <laughs> and we'll go home and sleep like a baby no ptsd no nothing not in that sitch <laughs> yeah look over here oh look there's um yeah there's something else happening <laughs> there's yeah, a wall over here there's, there's i actually this. did yeah. i just did a um and then I'll make, the, I'll make this the last point. I just did a um, scenario-based training with the USCCA. And nice. there was a situation where um, I had the option where I could have just left. Um, I, I told the person I was with to leave. And then I stayed and then dealt with the threat. And ironically enough, talking about what you were talking about earlier with respect to cops shooting people in the back, um, probably getting away too much information because the video's not even out yet, but um, <laughs> the benefit of watching probably out now watching the podcast right uh i remember so after i shot so i shot the guy and they asked me how many times did you shoot him and i said three like i know when i shoot three shots it's, you know bang 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 mm -hmm. um they were like you shot eight <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. that whole perceptual distortion mm -hmm. and yep yep, yep. And so you just kept shooting. You just kept shooting until the threat went away. Basically, that's what and, and the funny thing is, yep. I shot him in the back too. Yep. So I, I, so basically, he, I had kind of like a sideways angle, and as he started training his gun onto me, I, I took mine out. I shot, bang, 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 and he, as he got hit a couple times because we we're in stress vest, mm -hmm. and so he's getting shocked, and he's like, oh shit, yep. and he turns to run. <laughs> Right, so I'm bang, bang, bang. He's like da da da, and he, just, and he turns around. Oh, this I'm 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 completely. I'm thinking he was in a real situation. This really happened. This is a training exercise he was in. Okay, run, and I got him in the back. So yep, that was eye opening for me. It was incredibly mm -hmm. eye opening for me. Um, yep, I always knew that that dynamic could you know exist from the standpoint of how you could end up shooting somebody, but to experience it not on a it's, real level, of course, yeah, but just in that yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that that kind of training is is fantastic. I've actually um, I'm just in the process of uh, finishing writing my second book. I've written mm -hmm. two books now, and this book is called "So You Want to Get a Gun," <laughs> and which like will be out on already. Amazon very very soon. Yeah. And basically, yeah, w promo. You see, I talk about all the pros and cons of getting a gun, but uh, you know, I I say you you need at a minimum to get your safety training mm -hmm. by someone that knows what they're doing not not your dad your uncle but yeah. someone a professional you need to get legal training in terms of where you can and can't carry a gun you should look to get some intermediate training that talks about reloads and movement and use of cover and mm -hmm. things like that and then you should work your way up to exactly what you were talking about where you're doing scenario stress testing where you're being put into unknown situations it's not going to be okay we're going to go to the line we're going to yeah. load a magazine the 10 rounds we're going to shoot two rounds each time when i when the no you're just going to say you're buying gas 
go. <laughs> and you go walking in like, what's happening? Yeah. And there's all these people, all these people yep. and then one of them does something and you're like, ah! Yep. And, and, you, and you, you have to have the honesty and, and the humility to go, well, I, I kind of effed up there because yeah. I didn't perform. And then that humility then makes you a better firearms owner because mm -hmm. you realize. Man, that's crazy, bro. I feel like living in Chicago, like every scenario that there ever could be has already passed through my mind and I've already worked it out. Or, you know what I'm saying? So it's like. It's it's not all about just, just putting holes in paper. It's about, there's so much more. So yeah, it's not quite the very end, but it's like the last chapter is mm -hmm. training. Yeah. of my book and it's all about being from chicago has jaded jaded me for in, in certain scenarios like, like this conversation like it's cool convo but like yeah. you know here, here's what you should be aiming for and you should spend money on it because he's right though like all this training stuff you should be trained if you're gonna go that route but it'll it be a lot cheaper than the legal fees it can be the one percent <laughs> of your life that is a hundred percent of everything yeah yeah and so and i mean and, and that's a clean statement. The one percent of your life that was one hundred percent of everything. That's how a lot. Of, that's why a lot of people in jail right now. That one percent of your life that made that 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 caused a hundred percent of everything. It cost you a hundred percent of everything. Dang. My ideal, like my my goal, and I'll end on this note. I envision an America where it's understood. There is a culture, not of just guns, but effective and efficient and safe utilization of firearms by the vast majority of people in America. Even the people that don't own guns know how to use them effectively, legally, and smart, and safely. And it's just understood worldwide. People in America, they are gun people in the same way that people look at the samurai, so to speak. Um, you know what would be cool? You know what would be really awesome? And I know this is like a crazy thought. Imagine if they taught it in school. Like <laughs> oh. Imagine if they taught firearm safety. You don't have oh, to have a, a gun, but we, but we just want to have a class, a mandatory, a mandatory class in high school that covers firearm safety. So kids don't pick up guns and shoot themselves or their buddy. So the kids yep. decide if it's exactly. a sport they want to get into. So yep. kids, yep. And so, so everybody has this level playing. I don't know, man. Kids is kids at the same time. But that is a good idea. But there's, I can see a lot of negativity behind it. In field of everybody knows. Everybody knows what works, myths, realities. I'm telling you. <laughs> if your friend has a gun, you want to stay away from them or you want to be their friend, you know, whatever. Let's put it out. Let's educate everybody. That would be that would be um, think, that would be effective. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, that would that would really tie into what you just said, where everyone were like, you, you know, they teach that teachers, like crap in yeah. school, and then everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, you, we want to teach get, we want to teach them about being fish, and the next day they could be a monkey, and then a girl, then a boy, <laughs> yeah, then a rat, then a dog. Which, by all means, do what you do, I guess. But the fact that we live in a country with over four hundred million guns, and we don't teach baseline gun safety in schools. Is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. I, I like agree. I agree seventy five percent with this. Yeah, it's it's. But I I think it would be. I think it'd be groundbreaking. I think it'd be very effective. Yeah. But it's one of those things, isn't it? Where you never done? thought about doing it like that. Um, you definitely yeah. need to do this again. All right, man. That was eye opening. I learned a lot of things that I did not know um, about the UK's way of life over there with guns. But you know what I'm saying. A lot of this stuff I did know when he starts talking to the guy above me uh but you know so look man let me know y'all comments man i'm gone we can have a convo about it in the down below